huge UFO and mysterious alien with a black box. This is basically the Finnish Dyatlov Pass case. Dyatlov Pass was in Siberia, Russia. Nobody knows what happened to the hikers there. 52 years ago, a strange event happened in the village of Imjarvi in the countryside of Hinola in Finland that seriously stunned the Western media. And this mysterious incident, also known as the UFO case of Lake Imjarvi, is similar to the Dyatlov Pass incident that happened in the Ural Mountains in Russia. The story is focused on 36-year-old forester Arno Henonen and 38-year-old farmer Esko Viljo. On January 7, 1970, in the forest on the outskirts of the village of Imjarvi, 10 miles north of the city of Hinola, 80 miles northeast of Helsinki, Finland, they went for skiing. At seven, minus 17 degrees, the sky was clear with no wind. It was 4.45 p.m. when they heard a growing buzz from above and saw a powerful light in the sky, which was moving from the north in the form of a bright cloud. The cloud made a large circle in the sky and went straight for the skiers descending. The buzzing grew louder, about 15 meters above their heads. That's about 50 feet above their heads. The cloud stopped and began to slowly turn as if swirling, glowing with red-gray radiation. The frightened forester and farmer fell into a stupor and silently watched as a luminous metal object clearly loomed inside the cloud in the form of a classic UFO saucer with a diameter up to three meters. And the buzzing continued and suddenly the object began again to descend very slowly. The red-gray cloud dissipated, allowing them to see the object even better. The UFO hovered at a height of three to four meters. The buzzing stopped and there was a deafening silence, according to the forester Henanen. The object was so close that it could have been reached with a ski pole. From the bottom of the ship of the craft, a powerful light beam splashed from a protruding pipe with a diameter of 25 centimeters. It made circling movements twice and making a circle about a meter in diameter under the ship and returned to a vertical position. The red luminous circle formed on the snow outlined by that beam and around the perimeter of the circle, a black ring around one centimeter wide appeared. Both witnesses stood at the very edge of the circle and could not move. The beam, as they said, became solid. In eight seconds, the luminous circle, the luminous circle began to narrow and decrease to the beam up to uh, 25 centimeters. After that, the beam broke away from the ground and under intermittent noise began to rise into the ship until it disappeared. Everything lasted just a few seconds. And suddenly the forester felt that someone grabbed him by the waist from behind and pulled his body towards him. The ski, the, he skied back and at that moment the beam of light appeared in the same place and in the middle of the beam a humanoid figure appeared in the snow holding a black box in his hand. And there was a hole in the box and a pulsing yellow light came out through it. And according to the description of the forester, the creature was about 90 centimeters tall, that's about three feet, and a waxy face, very thin arms and legs. The farmer also described the stranger. He said that the creature stood in the middle of the beam and glowed like a phosphor figure. He was about a meter tall, very thin. His face was very pale and his shoulders were slumped. His arms were like those of a child. There was a helmet on his head in the shape of a cone, as if made of metal, he said. The creature did not express any emotions, but in a few seconds, he turned to the forester, directing a blinding light from the box at him. At the same time, sparks appeared in the snow from the circle previously outlined by the beam, long and red, green and purple. And the beam of light began to rise, swaying, and again disappearing. In the fog, the skiers did not see how the ship disappeared, and the, inc in the incident caused them nausea and numbness in their legs. Later, they had health problems, including what they describe as black urine-like, black coffee, facial swelling, headaches, vision, and memory problems. 
On the same night, the forester was taken to the hospital of the city of Hinola. Dr. Pauli Kayanoha said that the forester had a headache and joint pain. The blood pressure showed significant hypertension, which, according to Dr. Kayanoha, was caused by severe shock. The forester admitted that at the moment when he saw the creature, for some reason he first mistook him for his farmer friend, and later he realized that he was not seeing the farmer, but a strange creature. When the creature was gone, the forester saw the farmer again, and this change of pictures caused a mental illness for the forester. This case was later investigated by scientists, in particular the Swedish physicist Sven Olaf Fredriksson, a researcher member of the uh, GICOFF group in Gothenburg, Sweden, who in addition to the personal interviews maintained a long correspondence with the witnesses and other qualified investigators until squeezing all the possibilities of, this, of the case. In reality, it, the reality is that it's very difficult to diagnose with any certainty the type of ailment that the two men suffered. So much so that I preferred not to prescribe anything special to avoid major ills, the doctor said. I thought the best thing was to do was to focus on tranquilizers as the most effective therapy. The possibility that Han Hinnonen and Viljo were exposed to electric shock cannot be ruled out. The two men agree that the light was white and dazzling, so it must be ruled out that it is ultraviolet radiation, which always has a bluish tinge. On the other hand, this type of radiation does not pass through clothing. If the radiation absorbed by the witnesses has passed through it, it must have been a shorter and higher frequency type of wave, such as Ravus X. In addition, the symptoms presented by Hinon and, and Viljo are classic of an overdose. The, Invar G the Injarvi case is undoubtedly a beautiful case where the appreciation of a number of classic strangeness of the UFO phenomenon has been combined with a neat treatment by the pollsters. We could only wish that instead of a forester and a farmer, Witnessing this event, it has been someone with scientific knowledge. This is on Hows and Whys by Vicky Verma. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.